Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about NPCs and which one to purchase if you're in the market for a NPC-1, Live-2, or a Key-61. Now in our studio, we've had the NPC-1 and the Live-2 the longest. The first one was the NPC-1 and I have a lot of experience using this as a standalone box for hardware sequencing and then also using it with the software as well to integrate into like a VST plugin for use with Ableton Live and all that stuff. The NPC Live 2 has kind of been like a secondary uh, production station and Memes uses this to make a beat basically every day. So this is like her main driver. The most recent addition to the studio is the Key 61 and I'll be honest I was apprehensive about getting the Key 61 because I thought it would be very redundant to what we already have but I've been pleasantly surprised with its utility, its function, and the feeling of it being being a keyboard workstation. So if you're in the market for a new MPC, hopefully by the end of this video, you will have clarity to your decision-making process. So let's talk about similarities between all three units. There's always gonna be the same software involved, meaning the same operating system. The modern day MPC OS usually gets updated across all the platforms at the same time. So there's not really a situation where the Key 61 has different software to the MPC one. Now, if you look at the force, which I'm not gonna be discussing in this video, but if you are interested in the force, that does get separate updates and is not the same as this MPC line. So something to note right there. But in terms of the plugins, software, sounds and all that stuff, all all of the modern NPCs, the, the One, Live, Key61, the X, and also the software as well, all share the same sounds. And you can basically trade projects back and forth. So you can start something on the NPC1, go into the PC, and then bring it into the Key61, assuming you haven't uh, pushed past the restraints of what the hardware versions can do, which is eight plugins, eight audio tracks, but unlimited MIDI channels and basically unlimited um, uh, sample groups and that type of stuff. Obviously all of them have stereo inputs for sampling and then also regular stereo output, but some of them have additional outputs and we will get to those differences. But essentially what I'm saying is that you can get your NPC production needs all done on any of these units and not have to worry about whether or not you're missing out specifically on features that are in the software. They're in there. There is one difference for the software in terms of the hardware though, and that the Key 61 does have four gigs of RAM versus two gigs for the MPC-1 and two gigs for the Live 2. Now I have not hit a RAM limit before with the MPC-1 or the Live 2, so I don't think I'm gonna do that anytime soon with the Key 61 being twice as much RAM. The reason why they added more RAM, I'm assuming anyways, is because they wanna have more larger sampled instruments and because the Key 61 is technically now competing more with that keyboard workstation type of uh, environment. All right, so now that we have uh, similarities out of the way, let's talk about key differences. So starting with the MPC-1, it is obviously the smallest of the three. So if you're looking for the, the most compact footprint for your studio, the MPC-1 is the choice. I personally use this as both hardware version and also software controller because you can go into software controller mode and then control in the MPC software inside your computer, which has been very functional and useful for me in my productions. Like I said, I use it in the VST version inside of Ableton Live. And what's great is to start a production on the MPC, any of these MPCs really. Actually, what we've been doing is memes will start a beat on the Live 2 and then I'll take that, import it into the computer and then hook up the MPC-1 as a controller mode and then parse out the beat that way and start working with it in Ableton. So that functionality has been really great and the MPC-1 really excels at being the controller for your PC environment. Pads are smaller than the MPC Live uh, and I believe the Live has pads that are similar to the X. So if you're looking for the best drum pad type of experience, you probably wanna go with the Live or the Live 2 or the X or something like that. Whereas the MPC-1 has smaller pads and also the Key 61 has the same pads as well as the MPC-1. So you're gonna be getting the same drum pad experience on the MPC-1 as you are with the Key 61, albeit a little bit different with the Key 61 because of the angle and like the, the positioning of a keyboard in front of it. Because the MPC-1 you can kind of like put right in front of you, you know, or put on your lap or something like that. So a little bit different experience right there. Again, if space is an issue for you, then the MPC-1 really is great. However, it does miss a few features that these other boxes have. For instance, there's no Wi-Fi. So anytime you want to do an update to the, uh, the firmware via internet connection type of stuff, you have to plug in a Cat5 cable into the back of it to do the internet communication on that. Or if you want to activate plugins, you know, you have to actually go in, plug in a Cat5 cable and do it that way. Whereas the Live 2 and the, uh, the Key 61 have Wi-Fi enabled, so you can actually just do it automatically over your Wi-Fi network and 
that's very convenient and I like that. In fact, if an NPC-1 Mark II comes out, I really hope they do put Wi-Fi in there because it is nice to have that. Another thing too with networking as well is if you are a Ableton Live user and you use Ableton Link, which means it broadcasts the, um, the tempo of the Ableton session, these NPCs can read that and sync up with the Ableton Live session. And if you wanna do that with the NPC-1, you obviously have to plug in a Cat5 cable. Whereas the Live 2 and the Key 61 can be on the other side of your studio, connected via Wi-Fi, and get that Ableton Link connection, which is really nice and handy. So, something to consider if you are an Ableton user. And actually, one more note on that is there is the control feature right here, which turns it into an Ableton Live controller type of thing. Again, if you're on Wi-Fi on these boxes, you can use that feature without having to plug in a Cat5 cable. If you do just set this up in your studio in one stationary spot, then you can just run a Cat5 cable and not worry about it. So there's that as well. In addition to not having Wi-Fi, this also does not have the ability to hook up a SATA uh, drive into the, the storage system on here. You do have an SD card slot in the front of the box. That's actually how I've been handling my data is I just have it on an SD card and that's been fine. This read speed isn't like super fast or anything like that, but it's fine for doing projects. And it's also easy to swap that SD card to a computer if you wanna copy stuff or plug in the USB connection into a computer to copy data from the drive onto your computer. But if you are looking to have like a terabyte of sampled recordings on your NPC at any given time. You're kind of out of luck with the NPC one unless you get a terabyte SD card. And I don't really trust the super large ones personally, you know? So if you're in the position where you need to have at least a terabyte or more of storage for samples, then the Live 2 and the Key 61 are the only options for that because they have actual uh, internal hard drive support that you can pop off the back and plug in like an SSD SATA drive. Additionally, I believe the MPC-1 does not have a, uh, a fast USB port. I believe it's like a USB 2 port where if you look on the back of the Live 2, you get the blue ports right there. And I, I believe that means it's USB 3 or higher. Your data connection type of stuff is a bit faster on these, these other boxes. Future Tefty here. Something I forgot to mention while recording this video is the internal flash storage space of each one of these devices. Starting with the MPC-1, it is only four gig. And on top of that, I believe you only get access to two gig of the actual space. So space is definitely limited on that. And if you go to the Live 2, you get 16 gig. So four times the amount of space. And if you jump from the Live 2 to the Key 61, you get 32 gigs of flash internal storage space. Now that flash storage space is very fast, but you don't get direct access to it from plugging in a USB cable to your computer. So managing files and transferring stuff is actually a real pain. And it's definitely recommended to just use an SD card or a USB drive or plug in an internal SATA drive to handle your storage needs on your NPC. Again, just little things to consider. None of that has really affected me in the long run for my productions. The biggest thing is having to plug in a Cat5 cable when I'm working with it. So that's the um, that's kind of like the biggest drawback of the NPC-1 in my opinion is that you don't have like a Wi-Fi connection to be able to communicate with studio stuff if you need. And it obviously misses some of the other features that are in these boxes and we'll get to that. So yeah, NPC-1, Great for the smallest footprint in your studio. It's also the lightest out of all of them, uh, but there's no battery, so you still need to bring a, a power brick with it. Moving on to the Live 2, this one does have a battery. And like I said, the, the pads are a little bit bigger, so a little bit more friendly for finger drumming, if that's like what you wanna do exclusively. So you get battery, you get the finger drumming experience, and you also get speakers, which is very, very interesting. When I first got this, I didn't think that the speakers would be good or worth it in that sense. I've been pleasantly surprised. Now, they are not gonna replace studio monitors. You're not gonna do professional mixes on these speakers. So let's get that out of the way first. But what you are gonna be able to do is monitor your jam session or monitor like your, you know, if you don't want to be stuck to headphones or if you have several people in the room with you, you want to hear a beat that's happening, you can do it with the NPC Live. Or I mean, this is literally not plugged into anything right now and I can actually make sounds with it with the speakers. It's actually a really great mobile solution, even though it's bigger than the MPC-1. You'd think the MPC-1 is gonna be better for a mobile type of setup, you know, but the Live 2 really fits the bill here. With the speaker and the battery added, it does increase the weight, so it's not exactly light. And if you throw it in a backpack, you will definitely know that you have 
and MPC Live 2 in your backpack <laughs> if you're uh, if you're hiking. But it's an excellent MPC, and like I said, Memes has been using this as her main driver, making a beat a day, and she'll make a beat on the headphones and then unplug and then play it with the speakers and then we'll jam out to it. And that's been a really cool solution because it's like a mobile studio setup in that way. So you can just bring it around. The other thing too, is it's got two additional stereo outputs. So you have your main stereo outs and then you have two additional stereo outs on the Live 2. And that is very useful if you don't wanna hook up an additional audio interface to be able to get additional outputs and just wanna go straight, you know, like you have your drums out, the stereo mix, you got tonal instruments like guitars or something out of the uh, three, four. Maybe you got like bass or something coming out of uh, five, six that you wanna keep separate for when you uh, record it and do like a mix. I really appreciate that as someone that does a lot of like DAW type of stuff and wants to multi-track sounds into a computer later on to mix like, you know, a week later or something like that. The MPC one only has a stereo out and it has a stereo in. So there's no additional outputs on the MPC one. However, you can hook up an audio interface like I just mentioned and have additional outputs. And that's been pretty good for the most part. There has been bugs here and there. I mean, it's the MPC software, there's bugs, but the audio interface support has been pretty good overall. And as long as it's a generic USB audio interface support type of thing, then it usually works with these platforms. However, not everything is supported. So you do want to double check online and see what people are saying. So I definitely appreciate the additional outputs. And like I said, there's additional uh, SATA drive support so you can put in like a two terabyte drive and have a, an absolute ton of storage inside this box for sampling and having multi samples and all that. But the, the speakers honestly made a big difference. I was very surprised at how good these speakers are for just uh, jamming and production. So if you're at all curious about being able to have an all-in-one setup that has speakers, like the Live 2 is surprisingly good for that. So don't discount these speakers and think that they're like a, a throwaway feature. They're actually pretty awesome. But again, you're not gonna mix or master on these speakers. So not gonna do that. Oh, and one final note about these speakers actually is that they have decent bass. Cause that was the thing that I was worried about. I was like, why would you have these small speakers when you're making like, you know, drum and bass music or something like that. It's actually pretty good. You can definitely hear the lower tones. They do a good job. Again, it's not like it has a subwoofer or anything like that but you get enough of the vibe in there. So the engineers did a good job with these speakers. So one final note I will say is that the, the buttons are a little more on the rubbery side. So that could be a pro or a con for you. I don't mind it personally, but they do kind of like get a lot of gunk on them. Same thing with the pads. The MPC one has more plasticky buttons, I guess more like old school style. And, uh, and the Live 2 has got these kind of rubber things. I know some people online have said that they kind of disintegrate over time. I haven't had that happen and it's been a couple years. Your mileage may vary depending on the type of environment you're on. Moving on to the Key 61. This is the newest of the three. It came out about nine months ago and it's the, again the newest in our studio. The layout on the Key 61 is actually really good. I've really appreciated how things are just fast and right in front of you and the, the 61 keys in front of you actually make real sense for how things feel when you're playing it and uh, making beats. So I've been pleasantly surprised at how well this feels with the Key 61. I have a, a first impressions video actually. Uh, maybe it's the previous one or a couple of back, but I'll, I'll link it below. You can check that out if you're interested in my first experience kind of impressions with the Key 61. I wasn't an early adopter. So again, it's been nine months, but I, I ignored it. And I gotta say, it is an awesome NPC. I really like it. The keys are good. They're not the best synth keys, but they're not bad by any means. They're kind of like a middle ground, maybe above middle or so. So if you're looking for uh, decent keys, they'll get the job done. If you're looking for really good synth keys, you might be a bit disappointed, especially if you're picky about it. They seem to be a little shorter as well. So there's that. The mod wheel and pitch feels good right here. It also comes with a touch strip, and this is the MP only MPC out of the three that has this touch strip right here. And it's multifunctional. You can do things like touch effects that can affect the entire stereo output, or you can put this touch effects plugin onto a specific track. Uh, you can also change it to like the, the note repeat latch type of stuff. So you can change the subdivisions of the note repeat, which is really cool. And then you can also use it as a touch strip for certain things like the Q-Link knobs. So you can go, actually here, I'll, I'll pull up something, I guess electric piano, edit instrument. So if I have release selected here, and that's not working. Q-Link, there we go. I had to move the Q-Link a little bit, but now I can use this as a dedicated knob for that. 
as it's moving. I honestly didn't think I was gonna like the touch strip as much, but after using it, it's a really great addition to the MPC experience. And I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing that get integrated into a Mark II of the MPC-1 live, you know, like it's, it's really nice and functional. So I wanna see that in more of the boards. A standout feature that the Key 61 has that the One and the Live 2 does not have, other than the keyboard obviously, is preamp microphone inputs. So you can actually plug a microphone and also give it phantom power directly into the Key 61 and record it. And it has two of them. So you can do a stereo uh, mic setup and record it directly into the board and not have to have additional preamps hooked up to be able to go into say something like the MPC-1 or the Live 2. These guys have line inputs, dedicated line inputs, whereas you can switch between line input or instrument input or microphone input and, and flip on phantom power. If there's an MPC-1 Mark II, it really needs at least one microphone input. It's just so much more functional to be able to hook up a mic real quick and get it and uh, get an idea down and then move on. And yeah, I know you can do some hacks and kind of like gain boosting and all that, but anytime you're using something that's not a mic preamp, you're adding a lot of noise to the signal. You might want that noise, totally fine, but generally speaking, if you want a nice clean recording, you're gonna want a microphone hooked up to a preamp to get that clean signal. Another feature is that the CV gates are all split out via individual one through eight outputs. Um, if you do a lot of modular, this is nice because the MPC platforms are actually really great to interface with modular because all of them have CV gate outs. Whereas the MPC-1 and the Live 2 have stereo outs, so there'll be four stereo out jacks. And same thing with the, the Live 2. And what you have to do is have to get stereo splitters, so eighth inch to left right splitters, to be able to get the individual CV gate outs out of each one of those. Whereas on the MPC Key 61, you have all eight available directly to you on the back, so you can just plug directly in and get going with your modular. Now that's obviously dependent if you have a modular system and if you even use modular or if you're curious about modular in the future. If you are, the Key 61 is technically a little bit better, although these will do great regardless. But you know, if you're not into modular, then don't worry about it. It's just nice to have. Something that the Key 61 does not have though is a SD card. Uh, when I first saw this, I was a bit surprised, but then I realized that the USB side of things, you can just plug in say like a, a thumbstick. And what I did was I bought a 64 gig Samsung USB 3.1 stick and it's been super fast and had no problem saving projects and transferring them into the key 61 so that's been my solution not having an SD card on there uh, has been no problem I was taken back a little bit I was like whoa no SD card what's going on here uh, but it's actually no no problem at all and if you run out of USB ports on the back you can just plug in a hub powered ideally and then you can get just basically as many USB ports as you need to be able to plug other instruments or uh, MIDI devices directly into your box and get going. In fact, I've done that with the MPC-1 and this is not a fast port. Plugged in a powered USB hub and been, been able to control like eight different uh, synthesizers through that interface. So it's been very functional. Something that I forgot to mention on the software side of things for the Key 61 specifically is with registering and purchasing your Key 61, you do get access to the licenses that are available for the Fabric XL, the OPX4, the Stage Piano, Stage EP, Organ, and Studio Strings. Now, this could be something that could sway your decision making because if you're to buy those plug-in bundles separately, I believe it's like 350 bucks for the bundle. So if you get an MPC-1 and you want to use Fabric XL or like say the, the Stage Piano plug-in, you have to purchase it and then you have to activate it on the MPC-1. And same goes for the Live 2. Whereas the Key61 has them built into the platform and the software. And if you register your Key61, then you get access or you get a license for those plugins, which you can then use on the software. Or if you have an MPC-1, you can then put it into your MPC-1 or a license or activate the license on your MPC-1. Now that could be a consideration for you right there because the plugins are definitely good. They're, you know, they're workstation level type of plugins. So in terms of having something that's on a piece of hardware that's ready to go, like these plugins are fantastic. And it's definitely worth noting that you get a license with the purchase of a Key61 that you can then use on other MPCs in the future. One final thing I'll say about the Key 61 is that it's also an amazing software controller because I hooked it up into software mode and tried it out and you can basically use this as a uh, MIDI controller for your DAW 
and then also control your MPC software. If you're looking for like a, a MIDI keyboard that can also double as some other stuff, it's a bit expensive for that <laughs> specifically, but if you're looking for an MPC and a MIDI keyboard and want to control software stuff, it kind of does an amazing job all things considered. And you can also use it as a sound card as well. If you don't have a sound card, plug it into your laptop, then you'd have uh, inputs, outputs, and all that. Oh, and I forgot to mention, this has two stereo outs. So you have a main left, right, and then a three, four out on this box. So you don't have the full six outs like you do on the live two, but you do have four outs. So you still can say split out drums and then split out something else. Uh, for stereo mixes. Again, lots to consider. By the way, if you're planning on picking up any of these pieces of gear, we use Zounds and we recommend Zounds because we're affiliates, but also we've been using them for years. So if you're planning on picking up any of the NPC gear and you use our affiliates at Zounds, then it greatly helps out the channel. We really appreciate that. Like I said, we've been using them for years. We've used their no credit plans for years as well. In summary, I don't think there is a perfect NPC because all of them have pros and cons to them and there's things I would miss about each. Like the portability of the Live 2 along with the battery and the speakers is just really nice to have. And then the MPC-1 has a nice small footprint that can live on the desk and be shoved off to the side when I'm not using it, then pulled in front of me when I'm using it for the software and all that, like that's really functional. And then the new one, the Key 61, is just a fantastic workstation. Like this can be a dedicated workstation to get so much done. As you know, the sequencer is fantastic on the NPCs. I've been doing a bit of a workstation deep dive, I've been checking out the Phantom and some other uh, workstations, and the, the sequencer is just... <laughs> unchallengeable in comparison. The NPC sequencer is just, there's nothing like it for hardware. But I think that about does it for this video. Hopefully you found some information that helped you on your decision-making quest for what NPC that you may or may not be interested in buying. Again, if you use affiliate links, much appreciated, helps out the channel. A like and subscribe would be amazing if you're interested in this content. And if you have any questions or uh, or maybe some thoughts about the NPC line stuff, drop them, drop the comments below. I'll definitely be interested in hearing your guys' thoughts. Uh, but that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.